folks, Aaron here from Bean Sprout. Um, we're working through our shop tour for 2022, and today we're going to talk about hand tool woodworking and the space I have set up for that. Um, I didn't grow up with, you know, fine woodworking shops in my family or around me. Um, uh, most of my family are dairy farmers, and so there was always a shop on the property or around the farm or wherever. Uh, but usually it would be like a, you know, mechanics tools, a workbench, uh, maybe a grinder for um, sharpening things. Um, and a few, you know, basic hand tools for farm work and for the woodwork needed to work on the farm. Um, I learned a lot about woodworking and building and engineering while I was in the Scouts, and that all was great, but none of that was fine woodworking in any way. So I've only just uh, picked this up in the last 15 years or so, here and there, and uh, books, YouTube, with, from a few mentors, and trying things out myself. So um, I have the space for, you know, machines and hand tools. Um, most everything in Lou 3 that I needed, need to do could be done without the machines altogether or just with a tiny group of them. Um, and sometimes I take on tasks that I normally do with the machine. I'll do it by hand tools when I feel like it, especially when my son or my family is in the shop because, uh, you know, using hand tools is a more community oriented experience. If we're running machines all the time, um, you know, we always have to have safety gear and ear protection and dust collection running, etc. And it doesn't work very well to work together. So anyway, um, this main central part of the shop here, we've got a workbench here and a workbench here, both big fur Nicholson style benches. Um, and it's uh, plenty of room for when I work on furniture or cabinets or that sort of thing. But when I work on musical instruments, it's nice because I can keep multiple stations going and multiple instruments going at one time. Some of these bench tops, I'll do a task, let it to glue to, for the glue to dry and just take a step over and now I've got a new surface. So if we back up just a touch here, you can see a little bit better. So we've got one long workbench down the middle. This vise has a special call in it to hold the curved backs of musical instruments. So it's good to put bodies in. We've got, um, this is a double-sided sanding disc where it's flat on one side and radius on the other, and it just pushes it up against this cleat, and I do quite a bit of sanding right here on the flat surface or the radius surface. More bench space, and then that's the go-bar deck. This is a um, common in Lou 3 shops. I've been told this is an old Chinese invention, but basically these uh, fiberglass rods, when you bend them between the two uh, decks, it creates clamping pressure, and so we... Uh, you know, glue the braces onto the tops and backs of our instruments uh, with these as clamps. That way we can put multiple little pieces down all at once. It's got lots of other uses in the shop as well. So yeah, I've got the go bar deck here. And then below this bench, we've just got tons and tons of jigs, fixtures, glue up items, special uh, work holding items, clamps, you know, stuff for just Lou 3 on this side. Um, this bench back here, kind of the main workbench for me. I've got the um, instrument makers or carving vise. This offers uh, multiple angles, which is really good. And it gets the work up to really close to you, which I appreciate. And then I've got a, a normal, um, you know, front vise down there with uh, planing stop, bench hooks, doe's foot, you know, pegs, hold fasts, whatever we need for work holding on the main woodworking bench. And below is just tons more of jigs, fi fixtures, and other um, Luthery specific things. Uh, if we look here, I've got um, a tool cabinet that I made from um, that Hayward book, Carpentry for Beginners. Um, and it's got, you know, the basic um, setup of hand tools. Um, joiner plane, jack plane, smoothing plane, low angle, jack plane, and a couple of joinery planes little plane for brace carving and all the little things we need drills spoke shaves hammers saws in the saw till um there's a couple of japanese saws but mostly traditional saws you know tenon saw uh dovetail saw that sort of thing and then on the side we've got more draw knives files mallets marking and measuring clamps that sort of thing um moving over to the center here Got uh, scrapers, bench hook, measuring, drilling. Um, and then this little item here, I copied off of a photo of, on Christopher Schwartz's blog. It's nice to hold all the little doodads just for um, Luthery type stuff. And uh, all kinds of clamping calls, gluing calls, little clamps. 
And then I keep my number three smoothing plane and my block plane up here. These two planes get, probably get used the most in here. And so it's nice to have them right up against the um, planing stop and whatever needs to be done there. Then we've got tons of clamps, tons of uh, templates and, and stuff for, for instruments. Down here, the drawers are mainly fill, filled full of templates as well. Um, it's nice that it, when you make the same thing over and over again to not have to mark, not have to measure anything. You just mark off of your templates. And then uh, lastly, over here, this bench. The main focus for, uh, purpose of this bench is to keep customers' instruments organized. Each instrument gets a cubby hole. There's a bunch right here, and then there's um, 12 more down here that you can't see. Each uh, customer gets a card that's got all their specs and everything on it, and it, it's really important that I don't mess up anything, and that's why these are here. So we have all those, and then we've got certain clamps, veneers. This is all my sharpening equipment. I have my sharpening set up all right here so I can just do it real fast. I use um, shaft and stones, if you're wondering, uh, strop. And then over here, this is where I do a lot of fret works. So we've got the fret press um, and then all the equipment for that, some safety equipment, all kinds of carving stuff. So, you know, with this set up in the shop, I get most of my hand tool stuff done. Well, I guess we should show the bending over here. A little bench just for bending. I've got the heating element here where I can bend by hand. And then I've got a press here that uses a heating blanket and special calls for each um, size and shape of instrument. So I have several down there. And I made this little bench just for the bending stuff, which is very nice to have its own spot for that. Miter box, that's my main, or my main cross cut saw for rough work. And yeah, clamps, 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 clamps. Hang from the ceiling underneath the more wood stash is molds for instruments, one for every size and shape. Oh, you know, I was saying before that I don't have, wasn't raised with hand tool woodwork very much, but this is a tool that's from my grandfather's shop and uh, probably great grandfather before that. This um, draw knife was used to taper the ends of fence posts. So like for split rail fences or for any sort of rough work like that. So I got this from his shop. I also have a, a whetstone and a sheep shearing tool and a plumb bob from that shop. So this is a Swan Company 8 inch draw knife. And this was my, at least my great grandfather's maybe earlier. Lots of kind fence posts from that. Okay, so that's hand tools. Thanks for uh, watching along and uh, stay tuned for more shop tours. Thanks.